Hi, I'm Susan Meehan from Augusta, Maine, and I'm here to testify in opposition to LD-798 and in support of LD-987, which I can summarize that simple support, and it's between patient and doctor. But Senator Millett, Representative Cornfield, and members of the Education and Cultural Affairs Committee, there are moments in life that make us who we are, defining moments often shared by family. In our family, one of those defining moments is the day that Cindy May was vaccinated. Unfortunately, June 20th, 2003 is one of those monumental days in our family history, one of those markers. On June 21st, 2003, 10-month-old Cindy Mae Meehan had her first epileptic seizures, 27 hours post-vaccination with her third set of Hib, Prevnar, and DTAP. Diagnosed with vaccine-induced encephalitis, for the next nearly 13 years, Cindy Mae battled seizures, often uncontrolled by pharmaceutical medications. The daycare Cindy Mae was attending in 2003 would not accept our philosophical or religious exemption and a law just like LD 9798 did in fact result in Cindy May's death. Until June 21st, 2003, Cindy May did not qualify for a medical exemption, even though her parents had reservations. Every time government or laws were in our way, Cindy May suffered. In 2012, after 90 days seizure-free on medical marijuana in an illegal state, Cindy May and her mom very hurriedly rushed for the refuge of Maine's legal medical marijuana state. This very committee in 2015 unanimously forwarded a legislative document that became law to give Cindy May access to free and public education, a law that allowed her to return to school with her marijuana-based medication by her side. A different story, but Cindy May was part of a bigger picture of family, a society, a village, and a tribe who loved her. When Cindy May's doctor told me that those, those vaccines would do no harm, in fact guaranteed, he was wrong, yet he had more knowledge of Cindy May than any of you have of any of the children who would be affected by this bill. What I would like this committee to consider today is an ought not to pass on LD 9798, not to legislate and mandate medical choices, injection of biologic agents, and other medical procedures. To mandate that all patients fit into one criteria, why do we need real doctors who see real patients? Will this be the day that our government was authorized to decide what vaccinations pharmaceutical companies could sell at great profit and potential harm to children? Or will it be the day that Maine listened to their constituents and reaffirmed their constitutional rights? Our fourth perfect baby girl went into that doctor's office and the damage caused by those vaccinations was irreparable. You cannot ever take that needle back. Where there is risk, there must be choice. Choice of medicine, medical procedures, and injections. I vehemently oppose LD 798, not only for my children, but for yours, our future generations, and in Cindy May's honor and memory. Most, if not all of you, can only imagine how hard it is for me to be here today. Here, instead of by my daughter's graveside, on the third anniversary of her death. Three years ago today, on March 13th, 2016, Cindy May Martha Meehan of Augusta, Maine, took her last breath while sleeping in her daddy's arms. Cindy May died from epilepsy directly caused by vaccine-induced encephalitis. I am here to say that the risks of vaccines can be tragically high and our personal choice must be maintained. Where there is risk, there must be choice. I thank you for your time. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you for your testimony. Are there any questions? Senator Pouillot. I don't have a question, but as your state senator, I just want to say thank you for coming here today, especially on what I'm sure is such a difficult day. Um, and in Cindy May's um, memory, uh, thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Thank you.